In this worksheet, we're going to do a few different types of problems involving Fisher projections. These are examples of molecules that are drawn in Fisher projections. The first problem, we just want to be uh, locating the chiral carbon or the chirality center in each one of the following molecules. As a reminder, a chiral carbon or a chirality center is a carbon atom that has four single bonds, can't have any double bonds, and the four single bonds are each to four completely unique things, like four totally different things in the molecule. So if we're looking at this first molecule here, and let's begin by just identifying all of the carbon atoms in the molecule, there they all are. Um, this carbon atom on the top cannot be a chirality center because it has a double bond. In order to be a chiral carbon or a chirality center, you have to have four single bonds. Also the carbon atom that's down here on the bottom, that one can't be a chiral carbon either because it has three hydrogens. In order to be chiral, you have to have four completely unique things. You can't have three identical hydrogen atoms. Um, so these three remaining spots, those all represent the chiral carbons. And in a Fisher projection in general, the carbon atoms that are at the intersections of the horizontal and vertical lines, those are almost always chiral. It's a good idea just to kind of double check as you're working on these types of problems to make sure that there isn't a trick here, like perhaps maybe somebody puts two OHs. That would be sneaky. If there were two OHs here, that would mean that this carbon atom had two identical groups and then it wouldn't be chiral. That's not the case here though. Uh, and then we've got one more over here. So again, like I said, in general, the carbon atoms that are at the intersections of the horizontal and vertical bonds, those ones are, are almost always chiral. Next problem we're going to look at, drawing the enantiomer of each molecule. In the enantiomer, um, that is, as, you, as a refresher, that is the mirror image. So when we're being asked to draw the enantiomer, we're literally just being asked to draw the mirror image of the molecule. And for this problem, I'm going to assume that there's a mirror right here, and I'm just drawing the reflection of this molecule. I'm going to draw it over here. So that means I just want to flip everything around, imagining that I've got a mirror. I'm just drawing the opposite of this molecule. Now, um, for drawing what I, the parts that I just did, the horizontal bonds, those you definitely want to be flipping around. For the portion that's at the very top and the very bottom of the molecule, just, you know, there's no harm in drawing those flipped around as well. Although you might find when you're looking at resources, looking at answers, things like that, you might find that sometimes people do not mirror the top and bottom of the molecule. They leave those portions identical like that. And that might seem initially like it's inaccurate, but the enantiomer, when you're drawing the enantiomer, you are um, always mirroring just the chirality centers or just the chiral carbons. You don't need to mirror the rest of the molecule. And since this carbon atom and this carbon atom are not chiral, they technically don't need to be mirrored. Uh, but you know, for students, I always just kind of suggest to go ahead and mirror the whole entire thing. There's no harm in doing that. It's not wrong to mirror the whole entire thing. So again, I'm just drawing the mirror image of this, drawing the mirror image of the whole entire thing, CH2OH. And we've got a couple of more ones we can practice. These are, I feel like these are pretty easy drawing the whole thing in reverse. I realized I just kind of spaced out there and didn't say anything, which maybe is kind of weird. Um, so there they are, the enantiomers for all of these molecules. Now, the last thing that we're going to do with our Fisher projections is convert the Fisher projections to wedge and dash notation. When we're converting to wedge and dash notation, we are going to remember that in the Fisher projection, all of the horizontal bonds are wedge bonds, all of them. Kind of like, you know, like a string of bows coming down a, like a kite or something. So I'm just actually gonna do this conversion right on top of the original molecule. So all of these ho uh, horizontal bonds, they are all wedge bonds like that. 
And then the for the vertical bonds, the vertical bond that is at the very top is a dash, and the vertical bond that is at the very bottom is also a dash. And that's all that we need to do for these conversions. So we're going to take our horizontal bonds, and we're just going to make a string of bow ties. And then our very top will be a dash, and our very bottom will be a dash. Make some bow ties. And... Now you might see, if you're looking at other things, you might see the, the dashing also taking place on these internal bonds. And you could do that if you wanted to, that would be okay. I don't dash my little internal bonds, I just do the top and the bottom like that.